That's loud. Huh? Oh, hello. That was loud. Why hold am on, I just hold on. Here. <clears throat> this is uh, uh train wreck video podcast. Uh, no, I'll come Alan back over here. Jeff. I I I want to leave you by yourself. I want to leave you by yourself. This is Jeremiah. I'm by myself again. Why does it keep going back to nope, you? I'm, I don't. I don't, I'm I don't just, like this because I'm the most important person in the room, as you know. <laughs> check, baby. Check, baby. One, two, check, three. Baby, okay. Check, baby, one, two, three. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How's my? Turn up my volume. Okay, perfect. Turn it up. Turn it up. You know what's good is if we're gonna rip the podcast off of this, like none of this, none of this matters. This is just bonus footage, everybody. This is the behind the scenes. As I said, this is just what the podcast should be. Just us BSing. Oh, I see <coughs> what it's. I see what's happening. So this is our first one. Actually, the second one. The first one we did live in the same room together at the same exact time, which was kind of cool. So, uh, we're 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 seeing how this works. I do something about this. I'm looked very yellow. Nope, hey, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J Man and with J Man speaks. Welcome to much to say about nothing. With <laughs> Jeffrey <laughs> Scott Stanton and, and myself. We have a lot to say about something. There we go. Um, it was strange because the stream deck and it's still it's like glitching. It's going click, click, yeah. click, 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 click. But uh, you okay. know. This is what happens. We're in different locations, but we are trying to figure this out. We'd love to hear some questions. We got Billy from Montana. I, Billy, I, I can't see any questions. Oh, hold on. I got to ask a question about the questions. Okay. So I can't see the questions until you put them up. Is that correct? That is correct, unless you're following it simultaneously on the All Facebook. All right. So I'm going to I'm have to look on Facebook, too, at the same exact time. Because I, so I, uh, uh, I don't really see right. any right now. But we could make up some questions. Uh, Billy's going to New York this week, I think. Billy's next week, something like that. And I connected her with one of your agents. Um, oh, that's cool. She has a daughter there looking for a rental. Oh, very nice. Oh, is that the one you had? It? She called me about that one a while ago. Yeah, she said you didn't call her back. Yeah. Well, not <laughs> me. <laughs> All right, I have no idea how to view the comments. Questions, please. All right, I need to lower this because otherwise we're going to get echo. So cool. So this is much to say about nothing. Um, so if we don't get any questions, we'll have to say stuff about nothing. So let, let's um, let's do. I don't like this camera. We we have to work out the the, the bugs on here. See, so um, um, Jeffrey is very distracted by his appearance all the time. All the time. He's always like. Oh my hair! Oh, oh my gosh! What are we doing, Jay? So, Jay, man, let's let's since we haven't gotten a topic, we got a bunch of people watching. We really haven't gotten a topic yet. Um, so if someone asks, and this is this is much to say about nothing. So you can ask us pretty much anything, um, within right. <laughs> within reason, and we'll answer it. When you see me looking down, I'm actually looking at my uh, phone so I can see if any of the comments are coming in. So. This is what we're going to do. So we started this, it was a couple of weeks ago, where you were in the city with me at our corporate offices, DE behind us, at our corporate offices, and we uh, did a question, we did a um, podcast video, whatever you want to call it, about- NLP um, prospecting. NLP prospecting, so prospecting with using NLP, um, which is really cool, and I actually got a huge bunch, uh, a lot of agents, oh, that's cool, you guys should do this, you guys should do this, so we're doing it now. Um, and the first one, when J-Man asked me, well, what do you want to do about it? I said, I don't know. What do you want to do about it? We said, hey, we'll ask questions. If people got questions, we'll go that route. If not, <laughs> it'll be a train wreck. And more people will watch it. And they'll be like, well, what was up with that train wreck? So either way, we're always going to have fun actually doing this. So J-Man, for those of you, I mean, most people know you, you're you're up in Rochester, The Rock. Yes, The Rock, the R-O-C, Rochester. Uh, when I talk to downstate folks, they're like, Westchester? I'm like, no, no, Rochester, R O C. Uh, we're we're all the way as far upstate to the west as you can get right on Lake Ontario between Buffalo and Syracuse. Yeah, but I was there I was wide. there once for a training class once. Never oh, you back. should come back. You're allowed back. I think I think the statue of limitations is up. <laughs> well <laughs> You don't have well. the, you know the, the, the warrant's not out anymore. You're good. You're good to go, man. You're good to go. <laughs> yeah, I've changed my name since then anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference. Jeffrey. <clears throat> I feel no, like when I call like... you Jeffrey, like I'm your mother and I'm you're in trouble. I, I just I, I just you call me whatever you want. I don't well with either Jeff, Jeffrey, it makes no difference to me. Okay. It makes no difference to me whatsoever. J S so Jeremiah's J Man. J S squared. S squared. 
S squared. <clears throat> so what do we want to talk about? Let's 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 talk about something real estate related since we're okay. both in that that industry. Um let's do it. So what do we want to talk about real estate? So for the people who are, are watching, whatever, do you have a real estate related question? Like, how do I do this? How do I handle this? I have a seller who's doing this. I have somebody who's doing we got that. Some. Hold on. We got some. First one. <clears throat> how did you two meet? Oh, we this is our love story well, right here. We our were working through story. a park and I reached for his hand. <laughs> no, no uh, when was the first time? Was it ITI or was it before that? No, nice it was before that. Ria? Yeah, it's probably something. Probably through some. No, it's probably something through Nysar. Yeah. No, no, I like, th actually, I think it was at one of the NAR conventions. Oh. I think we were both hanging out at a place having beverages um, after, after at one of the NAR conventions. I think that's actually how we, uh, how we met. Yeah, and I'll say at first um, I was like, "Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Who's this guy?" Were you? Were you? Jay, man, I think you were guy. there, and I'll give everybody a story. Were you there when uh, it was Greg Sokol was there, if Greg's watching. Um, he's a broker from Staten Island. Staten you know Greg, Island? right? Yeah, I know Greg. A lot of so he was there, and some guy comes over to me, and he's trying to do a sales pitch at a bar at like 1.30 in the morning. So I literally turn around and just say this. Okay, so listen, I'm in sales too, so I'm going to ask. Just simple as this. What's your value proposition? Like, give me your value proposition in like – and I'll give you three minutes. Give me that value proposition. Yeah. And he goes, oh, based upon, you know, uh, machine learning. And I'm like, dude, 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 just like, how's it going to benefit me for hiring you? Right. Well, we based upon machine learning and I have, you know, my Amazon device can do this. I said, dude, like, I, 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 I know exactly, I think who you're talking about. And I know, yeah, I know the scenario, but it's, um, sell me this pen. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> it wasn't even that, like his product <laughs> sounded good. Right. But he but his, couldn't his explain what the correct. benefit is to me. And I'll put the real estate spin on this. I think a lot of real estate agents do that too. I think what they provide is good. They just don't know how to explain the benefit to the consumer. And I think a, a lot of times we talk too much about, you know, I'm number one. I'm the biggest in the market. I have a huge team. Best. I do this marketing. Yeah. And ultimately it comes down to like what's the benefit to the person I'm sitting across that kitchen table, dining table, office table from. And, and that was the whole point of having that conversation with the guy. And, and literally, I felt bad. And Greg comes up to me afterwards and goes, you made him cry. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like, should I go over and apologize? Greg's like, no, you're going to embarrass me more. I'm like, that wasn't my intention. Just that right. if you're going to sell me, like sell me. You know, I'm, I'll, I'll buy just about – why are you hiding behind me? <laughs> this is weird, Jay. You're now behind me. But I think oh, a lot hello. of times oh. – <laughs> <a lot> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I think a lot of times in real estate, we tell them, we tell people, oh, Jay, what are you doing? We tell all the things that we do opposed to letting the consumer, letting that buyer or seller know, like how we do this for them and what's the benefit to them. And I have no idea where J-Man went because we're not in the same exact room. Um, thoughts? Someone said thoughts of IC status, independent contractor status, being eliminated for realtors specifically. <clears throat> um as we see certain brokerages. Oh, actually, I think this is a good question. Yeah, that was Ron. Hey, Ron, how are you? Um, Ronnie. I, I think it'd be very difficult for them to do because it's it's the lack of control over the 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 salespeople. Um, and again, it, it's one of those where, like, if I'm the brokerage and GMN works for me, he makes his own hours. He should be, because if I tell J-Man he has to come in at nine and has to work till five, he's now no longer an independent contractor. He's then an employee. Right. <clears throat> so because J-Man has the, the freedom to get business how he wants to within reason, you know, within the framework of the law and do those things, I, don't, I think they'd have a really hard time switching real estate salespeople to employees not uh, and not leaving them as independent contracts. I think we have a really, really difficult thing to do. I know some brokerages have moved over, okay, though. So, this is great because we can do different. Here's my thought on it. I, I think there's so many people that are independent contractors that would excel as employees. Like they, they have a background, right? They have that background as <coughs> As an employee who they had a career for years where they were they reported to work, they were told what to do. And if literally if you said what I told you to do, if I mean if you did what I told you to do every day, you'd make what you want to make in real estate. 
But instead, we're like, no, I'm an independent contractor. I don't want to prospect. I don't want to follow up with my clients. And that's why you're broke. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, I need more <coughs> listings. You're not listening to me, man. Well, what are you talking this, about? This is the thing, and, and Brian's right. There are some models that have switched people, are some models that they're employees. However, if you look at the production of the average agent, or even the high producing agent at those companies who have models of them being employees, their production is significantly less. Because as a brokerage, if you make somebody an employee, the brokerage itself has more overhead. Therefore, I'm not going to pay you as much. That's my thought behind it. Like you're not going to be an employee making a ridiculous split. You're going to be an employee making X amount per making deal. Making a salary Just, or even a salary, yeah, right? A salary, a salary plus, you know, bonus or commission of that type of stuff. And if you look at, you know, we'll say one of those big aggregators that has employees, I don't want to say their name, that has employees that you can join their website and get leads from there. Their employees get like 50 leads a month and then they stop. They get 50 leads a month and that's all you get. And they don't get any more leads in for, for that month. And they don't go out there and get their own business. So I don't even see like, you know, if, if somebody came to me, Jamie, it's better this, do you have a team? Someone came to you and said, hey, listen, I wanna work for you in sales um, how much are you going to pay me on an hourly basis or an annual basis? Like, what would you say to them? Uh, I would say, well, your pay becomes effective when you do. <laughs> I like that answer, but you, you can't, I mean, it's, we're not selling, you know, electronics in an electronic store. Right. Well, you know, I, I, I can give you an example. So before I was in real estate, uh, I, I sold alarm systems door to door off by boroughs, Nassau, Suffolk County, all, all throughout New York state. But we used to do these these um, blind ads, which I think might be illegal now, but blind ads in the paper that said people needed to move inventory, no experience necessary, we'll train the right person. And we would have this big thing at the hotel, 100 people, mm -hmm. 200 people come in there, and then at the end, like I do this big hurrah up there, here's what you can make, all the money. We have two pay plans, pay plan A or pay plan B. Pay plan A was strictly commission, but you sell this much, there's no, there's no limit, right? We have pay plan B, there's a salary with a little bit of commission, but it's guaranteed. And then we do these mini interviews after and say, okay, what would you prefer, A or B? Anybody who said B, the salary plus commission, we're like, okay, thank you so much. See ya. We'll let you know. <laughs> right? Uh, but the people were like, oh, yeah. no, I, I know I can sell. I don't care about not, you know, uh, that it's strictly commission. I can do this. So those are the ones we would take them out and we would train them. And they, and they were beasts. I mean, sometimes it's that preconceived, con you know, that, that in your mind – because my mom, even when I first started in a strictly commission uh, sales position, she was like, go get a real job. And I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> mom, I'm making six well, people figures. Say that about real estate all, people say that about real estate all the time. When are you going to yeah. get a real job? I'm, I'm like, like uh, it's, this money I'm making is pretty real. And like, I'm, I come from Kodak town. You could have a real job at that place called Kodak. And then next thing you know, you worked there 20 years, 30 years, and they just let you go, cut your pension, cut your pay plan, whatever. But, so. but then generally this is the thing, and this is what I love about real estate. There's no cap on how much money you can make. Right. Right. Generally, when you're an employee, there is a cap on how much money you can make, G generally speaking. You know, and we do this in a lot of our training classes is, is you have people figure out, like, what's the hourly rate of pay? You know, if, and everybody can do this and follow along and you'd be experienced or not experienced. So it takes roughly the national, the national average, it takes around 160 two way conversations to get two listings and you'll close one of those two listings. And they say that's about 35 to 36 hours of working, having those conversations. So take how much you get paid per, per deal, you know, what your share of the commission is, divide it by 35 and that's your hourly rate of pay. I know when we do it with our, with, with our agents, their hourly rates of pay is higher than most attorneys, most doctors, you know, they right. have hourly rates of pay that could be $100 an hour or, or for our average agent in New York City, the hourly rates of pay for one deal just to generate that, that listing, not the closes, just generate that listing. Some of them are at two and $3,000 an hour. Where can you get paid that much without having an advanced or higher degree? So, even, you know, even, even then, even then, you, you know? yeah, you're not, you're, you're not. not. And you got all that school debt to worry about. Well, let's, oh, we, 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 we got another question here from Tracy mm -hmm. 
Reggie Smith, she is from Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, don't you know, Bobby? Um, <laughs> sorry for my horrible um, impersonation, Tracy. But here's what she said. How do you convince someone to sign right of first refusal so my seller can move forward with his accepted offer? So maybe, Tracy, if you could expand on that just a little bit. I'm guessing like, uh, somebody wrote an offer right and they have you. first right of refusal. I, I've seen a lot of agents write that in there when they get it accepted. So that if another agent comes in, writes a better offer, they have the opportunity to to compete, right? Am I right? And then if not, the seller can go with the second offer. I think there needs to just be an expiration on it. You have 24 hours. Yeah. Right? And it also right depends upon the, the right of first refusal because I've seen a right of first refusal could be like, hey, it's um, you know, my ex-wife. I'm not married. don't have an ex-wife. My ex-wife, part of our divorce settlement was that if I ever oh, sell the house, she has rights to purchase it first. Oh, yes. So yeah. we, need some, we need some more. And I've actually come across a deal like that. And part of it was now convincing the ex-wife to actually sign the right of first refusal, sign, sign over that, she's not, that she doesn't want to purchase the house. So, Trace, we need some more information, but we'll be glad to answer that question for you. Yeah, and I think it varies where you are. If you're in an attorney state or even like New York, upstate, downstate, it's, it's very mm -hmm. different. But always consult with the attorney. We don't want you practicing real estate law without a license. Yeah. Don't go. Yeah, I, I it's funny. I see agents like write up a whole sheet and like, and if this and then that and then I'm like, yo, this you want no. to be an attorney when you grew up. And I'm not there, so you better call one. Call one. Can we talk a couple of minutes about stupid things that agents do? Yes, why not? Can I say something that's my hugest pet peeve? Okay. <clears throat> we stream this on Facebook, so Hold on. I'm members of all the stupid all the I, I'm members of all those same realtor and broker groups that you are with initials and not initials. And I see agents go on there constantly. Showing screenshots of a text message saying, my seller just sent me this message. How would you respond? Okay. I don't care what state you're in. If you're saying it's your seller, then you're generally going to just say my seller means those words itself means you are oh, representing sure. that seller. Just because you said my seller, not a seller, not the seller in the transaction. When you say my seller means you're representing that person. Every single state that I know of has confidentiality. Like, what would you do, and this is one of my hugest pet peeves, so what would you do if the seller's cousin from Wyoming and you're in California is a real estate agent and they're in that same group as you and they're seeing that you're, like, I don't get that. Stupid things agents do. Booyah! <laughs> <laughs> I got all these sound effects ready to go. Um, I, it's, yeah, and in, like going to the, to the village for advice about a transaction where that you have a fiduciary, you know, here, Hey guys, here's what's happening in our transaction. How do you think we should <coughs> handle it? And it's like, yeah. first of all, what qualifies this group of people who randomly joined a group <laughs> as your uh, mastermind uh, group, right? <laughs> they have no, uh, they're no skin in the game. You don't know if they even know what they're talking about. And many of them just go, you know what I heard in this other group was that you should do this. And ask your broker. Yeah. Ask your broker. Ask your sales manager. <clears throat> there was one posted today saying, I, I, I'm not going to say the group, the person's name, that they're reluctant in cold calling because if a seller says yes, after the contract gets signed, they don't know what to do. So I, so I read it again. So they don't want to cold call because they're worried someone's going to say yes because if the person says yes, they don't know what to do after the, con after the listing agreement is signed. And people are like, oh, join a team. And I'm like, ask your broker. They should have given you some basic training on this is what we do to market a property. Like, I, I don't I don't get that. Like, I get you have to ask a question, <laughs> but ask your broker. Um, hey, Tracy hey. pops some more in there. Oh, she said uh, um, she's being stubborn. Here, bring it back up. She was being stubborn, wants sellers to remove condo status and then wants him to I'm pay not, for it. I'm not understanding the question, to be very honest with you. I don't, I'm not understanding it. I don't get it. I don't get it yeah. either. Um, send us some more details, some more details. Uh, in the end, I think having an expiration on a first right of refusal, just saying, okay, whatever it is you have until this date and time, 
and then if it's not removed, it's automatically removed. But have an attorney yeah. review it. Yeah, because I, I don't understand once the seller to remove condo status. Like, that could be a Wisconsin thing. Yeah, it might be specifically to Wisconsin. It could be specifically to Wisconsin. It's messy. She it said. sounds like it sounds like it's messy. So, <laughs> so there's the thing, Teresa. I'm going to give you the same advice we were just talking about. Ask your broker. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's what the brokers are there for. Ask your sales manager. Ask your team leader. You know, they should be there to, to help support you. So, Jamie, I told so you. So glad to be as here. Far as, <laughs> as far as stupid things that real estate agents and brokers do, what's yours? Uh, for me, it's just talking bad about other agents or just going on social media in general and airing our dirty laundry. I think it's the, the the dumbest thing you can do at all ever because it it does two things. Number one, it's not going to solve the problem. Number two, it makes mm -hmm. us all look bad as an industry when you go on and go, oh, I got this a transaction. Do you guys know Jeffrey Scott Stanton? Oh my gosh, he's <laughs> unbelievable. And then it's like, what is that going to do? It, it, he's going to hear about it. We have mutual friends. And yeah. it just makes us all look bad because then they go, oh, see, I knew it. Those money-hungry real real estate agents, again, arguing about money and, and transactions. I, I think it's that drives me bananas. I wish I could B-A-N-A-N-A-S. -A -A or, or, -A. <clears throat> or what about the ones that post, how do I get X percent commission? People are only paying me this. And I'm like, did you ever hear, hear the word antitrust in a room, in a, in, in a, in a group with 10,000 other real estate agents? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, Ron wait, says, everybody, think... um, our commission is negotiable. There is no standard rate. Uh, do you agree? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Let's continue. Uh, Ron, I think, I think Ron says Ron, it's okay not to know the answer and ask for assistance. Absolutely, Ron. I, that's huge true. And I think it's even okay to tell a seller, hey, you know what? I'm not 100% sure, and I want to make sure I don't – I want to make sure I give you accurate information. So – let me double check on that for you. Like, let me make sure. And I think that's fine. I think a lot of times we get almost too self-conscious to ask a question. You know, I, I, I think we do. And I think that's part of the problem in the, in the industry is that we all try to look like rock stars and we can all be right. rock stars, but you need some sort of support or be able to say, hey, you know what? I'm not sure. And, you know, I, and I, I think a lot of the times that will build more credibility than the answer that you were going to make up. Right. I'd rather you because I get I get incoming calls from vendors all all day long trying to trying to sell me. Oh, this program, that program. And I'd much rather them say to me, you know what, Jeff, let me get that information so I can make sure I get your accurate information and I'll get back to you in a few hours. Then them just give me some random bogus, you know, off the cuff type of thing. Mm hmm. <clears throat> so, Jamie, I have a question for you because for the yes. past last week, I was actually taking a, a, a class, a train the trainer class for a specific topic. And um, part of the class was talking about motivation. Motivation. Okay. So, what's motivation to you? Uh, like, how would you define it? I would define motivation as. We'll say prospecting motivation. Oh, prospecting motivation. Now you changed it on me because I almost had an answer. Prospecting motivation <laughs> is the desire to complete the task. Okay. So they gave this definition, which I thought was really good. It's made up of three things. Amplitude, duration, and velocity. And it's the amount of energy what? you have. But no, it's, it's, listen. Are it's the amount of how energy. Flight happens? Okay, go ahead. It's the amount of energy you have that you can direct towards a specific goal. And I'm like, I actually like that. It's the amount of energy that you have that you can direct towards a specific goal. And what makes up that energy is, is amplitude is how much is available. Duration is how long do you have that energy available for. And velocity is how fast you can do it. Am I hitting you? I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, in my, you're in my square, bro. <laughs> We're trying but to I be, thought, you know, six, three I, feet. I thought that was a different way of looking at motivation that was somewhat interesting to me, especially for prospecting motivation. It's actually, it's how much energy do I have to work to work towards that goal? Yeah, and it's there's a lot of truth to that because I, I, you know, when I want to prospect, you got to be kind of in the mood for it. And there's times like if you feel like it's a chore, just walk away and come back to it. Like you got to know when your peak energy time is. For me, it's yep. in the morning. Um, or if you got to do something to to hype yourself up, whether it's you know. Go for a walk, go for a run, go for a bike ride. 
get the endorphins going, then come back to the office like, yo, this is Jeremiah, it's Jay Manero. I'm calling about that expired listing. Ah! You know? By the way, he calls me like that sometimes. I'm like, stop. Relax. Yeah. You're like, uh, uh, Jay, man, could, you, could you please slow down a bit? Um, having my tea <coughs> here looking. So this isn't too much of a train wreck as I thought it was going to be. That would just ask us anything. And each, each week, I think as we move this forward, how, how often we're doing this, I think we'll actually come up with a topic. This first one was just like, hey, what are we going to what are we going to talk mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. So this is uh, so is anyone else have any questions out there? I'm looking over here. We got some folks watching live. Just hit it in the comments there. Anything that you're wondering in regards to anything in the world. It doesn't have to be real estate related because I sent this yeah, out to my entire estate, database. Right. It could be any other industry. It could be people who are in sales outside of real estate, people that are business owners. Because uh, we're good with people in general, human beings. Yeah. And this is something, this is some, I'd like to give advice to, to people. Like a lot, a lot of the, and this we say since it's for anyone, <clears throat> a lot of the things people would say like, well, how do you become good at real estate? How do you become good at this? How do you become at that? And to me, to a certain extent, being good at real estate is being, is being good in business, you know, being good in marketing, being good at whatever. And I think a lot of times what I like about this, you know, we'll talk about anything is that real estate's not just about real estate. There's so many different things you can learn that you can apply towards real estate. Like my thing now is I generally don't take real estate based classes anymore. I don't, I'm beyond that point in my career. I take classes on psychology. I take classes on sales call reluctance. I take classes on marketing. I take like, I take those types of stuff and then apply it towards real estate. And, and I think that makes, I know Jamin does the same thing. I think that makes you a more well-rounded person, not only for conversations, but more well-rounded when you're not just pigeonholed into this is how we do this in real estate. Well, right? I, was, you know, a lot of I was wondering is that if there was a class on like how to deal with Jeffrey Scott Stanton on a weekly basis. <laughs> Cause I, wanted, I think me and some of your, your colleagues at the office might want to, might want to take that, but no, there's, well, no, there's Jamie, it's, it's only, it's only a you. question. It's only you. When, um, okay. We got a question, but there's one, one more thing I want to say, ex, you know, tying in with what you said. And what I've discovered in, in working with successful people in business and in real estate is that they never feel successful. And what I, what I mean by that, right? People go, oh, Jay, you're killing it. I'm like, am I? I feel like I never feel like I'm doing enough. I feel like the most successful people are always doing more and never feel like they've made it. And the ones who are kind of average or just kind of they're they're the ones that are doing just a little bit and think that they're killing it right the opposite they're like i'm just yeah i, I call three people to, killing it killing it just sold i sold the house this month one house this <clears throat> month um, i sold the it, house this year wow. yeah it's like it's it's ne you know always hungry never satisfied is you know that 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 old quote. you know and i i agree and i think that actually has to do towards people's motivation is are you motivated towards something or are you motivated away from something? Are you motivated towards a gain or desire for gain or are you motivated away from, away from fear, fear or, yeah. or, or, or like, and I think that has a lot to do with it. And I know me and you are motivated, not away from, we're motivated to something better. Right. Like it's always like, what can I do better and next? Listen, I'm the SVP for learning and development for Douglas Elman real estate with a luxury brand of all luxury brands at, at, at for what I do in my career. Like that's the pinnacle. Like you don't get much higher than what I'm doing, but it's always like, Hey, I'm at the, the title level with the company level where I am, but what can I do to bring what I'm doing for myself, what we're doing for the agents to the next level? Like we did that last year. What can we do new? What's going to be like, what's going to be the next big thing that we're going to do. And I know one of the reasons why me and J man get along so well is because he has that same type of personality. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to be like that in real estate as a real estate agent, as a real estate broker, it's like, not what's the next big thing I can do. It's even saying this, like, what can I do better than what I'm doing now? Like, what can, like, what's the one step I can take towards the direction of becoming better at what I'm doing or learning something new. And I, and I think it's hard for a lot of people to actually see that. Like, what can I do better? Cause you well, can always do something better. And it's like the old story of the lion and the gazelle. Right. The, the lion wakes up every morning and he's like, I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. All it knows is to be a lion. And the gazelle wakes up and like, oh, my gosh, are there lions around? 
I'm worried. And they're they're running away from something rather than running to something, yep. which is which is the line. But we have some we got Mar, Mar oh, I messed up her name. Margula. 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 She says, when answering a call, what is the professional way to do so? I like this, Margula, because there's some people I call and they're like, Hello. <laughs> like, is this a is this an agent? I call about the listing. Yeah. Oh, geez, we're off to a bad I, start. I think, it, I think it has to go with your personality, go with your brand, go with your image. Like a lot of times people call, if I, if I see number coming across, if it's been, hi, this is Jeff, how can I help you? Like that's usually how that I answer, that's usually how I answer the phone because really most people who call me these days are, are real estate agents right. and asking right. me for help. So it's a very simple thing to do. You know, would you, J-Man, how do you answer the phone? Stop. Go for J man. No, uh, hundred oh, ninety five percent of the time it's this is Jeremiah. So how can I help you? Yeah, yeah. Even if I know who it is who's calling, if I know who it is, I might say, "Hey Jeff, this is J man. How can I help you?" Yeah, right. Because if I if I talk to you once and there's a high likelihood that I'll talk to you again, you, I mean we have so much storage on our phone. Save that number right there off the bat. If you call somebody, they go, "Hey Jay," I'm like, "Oh shoot, we knew it was me." All right, mm -hmm. okay, hey. Like the, you're set in this mood right in the beginning. And it's funny when people call me and anytime they ask for Mr. Stanton, I know it's a telemarketing call. <laughs> Mr. When Stanton, I, please. When I know that they're, they pause and go, could I speak to G? <laughs> G yeah. Yeah. Not here. Can He's not up, here. Can you put up Ron's? Uh, yep. Message. I'm going to hide behind. I think the, stay, I think stay, I think stay you're instruction. You'd. <laughs> um, yeah, I okay, Ron. I agree with you, but I'm also going to disagree with you. I think you absolutely need to be structured, and you absolutely need to 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 be successful within reason. Because there's some people who need to be structured. Uh, uh, Myers Briggs says there's thinkers and judges, or thinkers and perceivers. One needs to be structured; the other one needs to be more flexible. However, the statement that I don't agree with you is success in real estate requires you treat your biz as a nine to five. Now, success in real estate requires you treat your real estate business like a true business. It's not the hours. But to me, that's that's the major thing is that you run your real estate business like a true business. Like a business. You know, we used to say, yeah, like a business. We used to say all the time, are you a CEO or are you an hourly employee? Because if you have a CEO mentality, a CEO mindset, an entrepreneurial mindset, you have the mindset for real estate. If you're an if you have that, I'm an hourly employee. Right. You probably don't have the mindset for real estate unless you want to go work for those one of those companies where you're not an independent contractor. Well, I I think Ron, I agree with you in many ways, uh, but I think you meant nine to five meant was more like a, you're treating it as a business, metaphorically speaking, uh, rather okay. than working nine to five. That's my thought. But I I agree that um, that can be the pitfall, right? Flexible hours, unlimited income. Flexible hours, unlimited income. So you do have to, I always just, I say desire without discipline leads to disappointment, right? So if, if, if you have the desire, you're like, I want to work, but then it's like, oh man, I was binge watching Netflix last night and I stayed up late. Now I slept in and now, right? If you would fire yourself as an employee, you need to get on the ball or go find something else to do. Right? Yeah, Jamie, I'm going to give you the psych psychology behind that is it's yeah. called gold diffusion. It's competing goals. So which goal is more important to you? Is the goal of watching Netflix till one o'clock in the morning greater than the goal of I'm going to wake up in the morning and make my phone calls? Because mm -hmm. when you have goal diffusion or you're scattered with different goals, if we're talking about motivation is the energy to move towards something, you don't have the motivation or the energy to deliver to any of them 100%. Well, it's the delayed gratification, right? If you could say, you know what? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go to bed early. I'm gonna wake up at 4:30 to get the work done. And if I, when I get home, I have time. Then I'm gonna finish watching Power and all the rest of the episodes that I didn't finish last night. Uh, see, Ron Power. says he agrees. And correct, Jay man. Bada Thank bing. You, there we go. I don't know what this is. Did you just north smack north. me? In I'm the coming head. from the north, from the south. You don't even know. I'm just like exploding into action. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a good one. That? Hold on. Let's play that again. I'm coming from the north, from the south. You don't even know. I'm just like exploding into action. 
I got the best I, sound I, effects. I don't care. I don't even know what I can't play my sound effects because of what we're doing or what we're using for this. We can find a way. I can't. We'll All right, so I I think we, do we want to wrap it up? What do we want to do? Yeah, let's 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 wrap. Is there a way that if people have questions, they can ask us questions besides just if they're live? Maybe we'll have some questions for for next. Time yeah, so if, if you're watching this on the playback or you have questions that you didn't want to put to us live, if you put it in the comments, what we'll do is we'll roll it over to the next podcast, and it'll help us considerably uh, because we don't want to have to create the content. <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, because so much we of that don't wanna is, have to, we don't want to have to do anything. Well, no, it's <laughs> it's not that because you want to say it like that. When when we create content, it's it's speculation, right? We're guessing. It's guess and check what you guys might want to hear. If you give us questions, now we're creating exactly what you want to hear. There's bigger impact, and that's why that's why we do it. Thank you, Joe, yeah, for, for tuning in, and everybody else. Between between me and J Man, there's probably not a real estate topic that we can't give you advice on. I mean, between the two of us, there's absolutely you know if it comes down to a role play, it comes down to a scenario, whatever it happens to be, or maybe just some you know life advice. We both lived. That's something we ended. We both lived. <laughs> we have both lived, everybody. Hold on, let me say. I think this is a superhero story. <laughs>